Hey, this is Russell B. And these are three of my reasons for coming off psychiatric drugs. You know what? It looks kind of weird to be sitting in a parking lot by yourself talking to a camera. So just hang on a second. Let's remedy that. All right. That's better. Hang on. One thing's missing. Just a second. All right. That's better. We're just, we're just going to go with that. We're, we're going to use that for things. All right. So let's kick off the video. This is Russell B. And these are a few of my reasons for coming off psychiatric drugs. These aren't all the reasons, but these are just a few. First, I'm going to do a quick little introduction, kind of a bio about myself. I haven't really done that for this channel. So this is kind of a formal little, you know, about me. This is just to kind of help you understand that I was on medications, how much I was on and how, for how long I was on them. And then that'll help you understand, of course, a little bit about why I decided to come off them. So we're just going to go ahead and kick things off here. This is a brief summary of my history as a patient of psychiatry. I and mean, I'm reading from an iPad here. <laughs> I need some notes. So I was psychiatrized at age 11. That's when this all started for me. I was diagnosed with obsessive compulsive disorder and prescribed the antidepressant Luvox to treat that disorder, which Luvox is an antidepressant, so it was not used necessarily for its intended purpose. A few years later, I was prescribed an antipsychotic to treat the same disorder, that's OCD. And I continued taking antipsychotics for the next 10 years, along with countless other other psychiatric drugs. Though it's not exactly countless, I estimated that I took around 40 different psych meds over the 14-year period that preceded my coming off psychiatric drugs. I say around 40 because honestly I don't know the exact number. I'm reading this thing almost verbatim. And this isn't a competition anyway for those who took the most medications and for who took them the longest. It ain't a competition, so just forget about that. Not included in that 40 drug list are any medications used, we'll say experimentally, by my psychiatrist to treat whatever condition or problem. Drugs such as Aricept, which is a dementia drug. Also not included are the prescription drugs I took for the sole purpose of managing side effects, beta blockers, etc. I was given seven diagnoses over that 14-year period. Uh, those diagnoses were, in the order that I received them, OCD, uh, major depression, bipolar disorder, schizoaffective disorder with bipolar subtype, and I don't, I'm not usually going to get into the types or whatever here, uh, schizophrenia, and finally ADD. ADD was my final diagnosis. I was 24, 25 when I received that. Obviously, not all of those were concurrent diagnoses. Some replaced, you know, former ones. A schizophrenia, obviously, was a bit of a doozy. And I only experienced the, the negative symptoms of schizophrenia, which I know to some people that may be a shock that you can get the diagnosis while not having any of the classic symptoms of the disorder. Hallucinations, delusions, things like that. You're, you're traditionally, or just your psychotic symptoms, let's put it that way. The negative symptoms are your blunted affect, asociality, anhedonia, evolution. These are just from some health.harvard.edu website. I just took the most convenient route there. So you can only have the negative symptoms and still potentially get a diagnosis of schizophrenia. Now, coincidentally, the side effects of certain medications, antipsychotics in particular, can be mistaken for the negative symptoms of schizophrenia. So, woohoo, that's a shock. So, it is possible that someone like me could receive a schizophrenia diagnosis while the symptoms that they're displaying are also side effects of the drugs that they're taking to treat something like obsessive compulsive disorder. So, yeah, that's kind of crazy. And I just walked, so I'm sweating, it's hot. I got a little bit of a setup going here, so I apologize if you hear me breathing and stuff like that. I'm also not managing my breathing very well for speaking into a mic, etc. So all those meds and all those diagnoses were given to me by the time I was 25 years old. And I was 15 when I was diagnosed with bipolar, 20 when I was diagnosed with schizophrenia, to give you an idea of how things progressed. At age 25, I began what would become a five-year psych drug taper. And at the time of this video, I'm five and a half years psych drug free. All right, so without further ado, here are three reasons I came off psych drugs listed in no particular order. Reason one, who am I without the psych drugs? At 25 years old, I couldn't answer that question. Not that I had ever known, really. When I made the decision to come off my meds, I had been medicated for most of my life up to that point. I wanted to see what my life would be like without them. So who I was without the chemical interference was something I honestly didn't know. This isn't something that can be a reason, a motivation, for everyone. It really depends on when you started taking psych meds and or how long you were taking them or have been taking them. If you started taking psych meds after you already knew yourself, you really knew yourself, 
then this may not be an available motivation. But you may have an equally powerful motivation and desire to get back to the person that you were before. And in a way, this could be a more difficult thing to experience, to really know yourself and then feel like that person doesn't exist anymore, or to have it feel like they're a million miles away. That, that can be a very difficult thing to experience. So I don't envy folks who are in that position. Sticky tape, not always sticky. All right, reason two, side effects. Mm. After being on psych meds for 14 years, I was no longer a human being. I was a barely animate, monotone voiced stack of side effects in vaguely human form. And this is true for a lot of people. Prescription drug use has become so common that it can be exceptionally difficult to tell where the side effects end and the, oh, this is just me, begins. I learned that so many of the awful things I felt, some of them life endangering, weren't symptoms of a mental illness, but were instead side effects of the medications I was using to treat, quote, mental illness. It's a lesson that for some people has proven fatal. It nearly was for me too. So that's something that I want to get into in, in another video. I think we all know, I guess trigger warning here, I'm about, I'm about to mention suicide, just that, that it exists. I'm kind of like with NPR when they give that warning that their show acknowledges the existence of sex, that kind of thing. So I'm going to briefly mention here that suicidality obviously can be a side effect of medications and things like that. And that has proven fatal for some people. And, and it nearly did for me a number of times. So that's something I want to get into in, a, in another video because it's, it's obviously a more serious subject. And uh, no, I'm not going to disrespect them. This just isn't, I'm going to say, okay, this isn't the most serious video in some respects. Sorry. Um, so anyway, there's a lot to get into there, but side effects are a big deal. All right. Reason three. Reason three. Dead end. Almost literally. After 14 years on meds and being heavily drugged for much of that time from taking a psych drug cocktail, my physical health had deteriorated. I weighed 400 pounds. My blood work numbers were beyond bad. Doc said, the doc said, I was a heart attack waiting to happen. I also had out of control type 2 diabetes and had become insulin dependent. I eventually quit the meds, lost the weight, and lost the diabetes. I was also at a point where my mom and stepdad were beginning to look at group homes. And presumably, once they found one, I would have spent the rest of my life there. So, my ability to function on a daily basis was quite low, and the possibility of there being any level of improvement seemed an impossibility. And I can't stress that enough. It's an important point, and it cannot be overstated. There are so many people who are so over-medicated that no one has any hope that they'll ever improve. Not the individual, not family members, anything. And worse yet, the little bit of hope that is there has been given over to the pharmaceutical companies in the hopes that someday a miracle pill will come along. It's a cruel irony. I'm going to go ahead and stop right here to make sure I don't demand too much of your time. If you've made it this far, thank you. And I want to finish this video by asking what were or are your reasons for coming off psych meds? And just as importantly, just as valid, what are the reasons for staying on psych drugs? What are your reasons? So those are... Those are two things I want to ask. This is not a psych drug bashing channel. This is a channel that's all about people making their own decisions and ultimately doing what's best for them. That is what this channel is about. Is about. Again, thank you all for watching. Um, I treasure every one of you, and I just hope you all have a good day. Again, take some risks in life, but also try to be safe too. So, all right. Until next time, this is Russell B. And I'll... I'll see you later. All right. Bye. A mouth breather extreme, bud. <clears throat> it's like Ace Ventura and the Rhino. It's like Ace Ventura and the Rhino. All right.